Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. We are back for another trucking vlog. It's been a few days since the last video, so I got some stuff to update you guys on. But let me go ahead and get out on the road. I'll update you once we're driving. So, I left off the last video after delivering that load down in La Mirada. So, my next load was to be from let's see Anaheim to Tracy it was supposed to leave at 1300 on whatever day it was I don't remember now but it was supposed to leave at 1300 I get a text at 10 a.m. that says the load should be ready early and to head over there and at the time I was about an hour and a half away so I said okay sounds good I'll go on duty do my pre-trip and get going and that would get me there at about 12 12 30 ish I did that I got over there at 12 I parked in the wrong on the wrong side of the building so I had to walk all the way over to the correct side of the building and then find out that I needed to move but the person that I talked to on the wrong side of the building that's what they told me to do they told me to stay parked where I was walk over to the other side just in case my trailer wherever I needed to load it load at would was on the side that I parked on you know they were like it's not worth turning around going over there and then just find out you have to come back but that didn't end up being the case I did end up being on the wrong side either way I walked back over to the one side and I go up to the desk and they say N no it's not it's not early it's it's late and I'm like oh okay so it was supposed to be a drop and hook I was supposed to drop my empty trailer and then just hook up to a loaded trailer and get going right well it was delayed so I ended up not getting hooked up to a trailer at the dock even until right about 1300 and that trailer was empty that trailer still needed to be loaded they didn't start loading it until about 1350 and then it took them about an hour and a half to load it so I didn't get out of there or maybe even longer than that yeah it took them longer than that because I didn't end up getting out of there until about 1600 so 4 p.m. which means of course 4 p.m. in Anaheim means that I was at rush hour traffic so I sat in traffic for I think an additional like it, it maps said that it, it took me two additional hours to get through as opposed to what it would normally take and the problem with that was that my load had to be delivered that night so it was supposed to be delivered at 2200 um, so 10 p.m. and I was definitely not gonna make that so I had to contact my driver manager driver manager had to contact customer support customer support had to contact the people that I was delivering to to let them know I was gonna be late I was very late. I didn't end up showing up there until like 12.30. Uh, I was exhausted, of course, and I had to back it into the very last parking spot. I didn't back it into a dock. It was just a, a drop, like in an, an empty parking space. So I had to drop it in the very last spot, which was a pain because there was like rocks in the way and there was a bunch of like yellow pillars that I had to avoid. It just was not super ideal, especially when exhausted from being awake since 10 a.m., you know? And if you're wondering how all this works with my clocks, I was at the shipper for so long that it initiated a split sleeper, so that's how I was able to technically work for more than 14 hours in one day. So that was that load, right? So then I deliver that load. Dude, people flash their lights at me all the time. My brights are not on my headlights are are definitely on so I don't, people just I guess think that my brights are on when they're not but anyways I drop that trailer hook up to an empty drive over to where I'm spending the night and then realize when I get to where I'm spending the night that I left my hook or my uh, my padlock on the trailer that I left at the place that I delivered to in Tracy so that sucked and it was too late for me to contact anybody and be like hey what do I do about this so I had to just wait more on that story to come it's not not anything super exciting but still more more on that story to come I'm trying to go in chronological order so for anybody that knows me knows that when I tell stories I go on a lot of tangents and have a really hard time staying on track so I'm trying really hard to focus on staying on track right now <laughs> so I get my next pre plan and it is supposed to pick up that night 
think 9 p.m. or 8 p.m. or something like that. I show up to, I, I mean, that means I'm hanging out all day, right? So I, I hang out for like the entire day. I tried to take a nap, doesn't really work out. So yeah, hung out the whole day and I was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just go pick up the load. And it wasn't due for like two days. So I technically could pick it up, go back to the same spot that I was staying at at the moment and then stay the night again and then get driving the next day. So I was like, okay, I'll do that so that, that way I'm not driving tired, not driving in the, at night when I don't want to, all that kind of stuff. So I go to the shipper, I park, I walk in, I give them a number. They're like, is it a live load or uh, are you just picking up a, a trailer that's already loaded? And I said, it's supposed to be a live load. And I say, okay, well, we don't have anything with that number for a live load. So I said, okay, do you have anything with that number for an outbound load? And they say, no. So I was like, okay, so you don't have anything with this number at all? And they say, no. So I'm like, okay, sounds good. Let me go get all the numbers that I have, give them all to you, and we'll see if any of them work. So I find like three other numbers in the information that I was given, give them all of those numbers. None of them are anything that they have. They're like, it should be, wow, that sun is bright. Uh, <laughs> they say, it should be a number that starts with the letter A. And I'm like, okay. I don't have anything that starts with the letter A. And they say, okay, well, we can't do anything for you then. So, of course, again, this is at 8 p.m., so everybody from my company has already gone home that could handle this situation. So I call the night crew, and night crew says, sorry, you know, we can't find the number either. We, we looked through everything that we have, and that means you're just gonna have to wait until morning for your driver manager to get back, and then, you know, you'll be able to go from there. So. I just wasted basically two hours of my time, two hours of my on-duty time for my 70 clock. I have to drive back to the spot that I was spending the night at the previous night, spend the night again, wait until morning to get more information. So in the morning, I message, I say, hey, just to make sure, sir, uh, you know, night crew told you what's going on. They say, yes, customer service is handling it. I sit there for about two hours and then get a message that says, hey, you're not gonna worry about this load anymore. We're voiding it off of you. We'll give you something else shortly. So I say, okay, sounds good. A few, hour, a few more hours go by, they end up having me um, pick up a trailer that was dropped at one of our yards in like the Sacramento area and take it up to like near the Oregon border and drop it for another person to take it to the destination. So that one actually went pretty smooth. Uh, during that trip, I had to stop and buy a new padlock because I did not have one obviously so that was the result of that situation is they just had me stop and, and buy a new one so and it gets reimbursed so no big deal but i was bummed that i had to make an extra stop although i guess i didn't technically have to make an extra stop because i had to scale the load that i was picking up anyways so it just it kind of worked out and now what we are doing today is i have currently got an empty and we are taking it to glendale oregon to do a live load and then once we live load we are going to drive up to Kent Washington and that load does not deliver until tomorrow so I'm probably uh, fingers crossed hopefully <laughs> going to spend the night in Portland tonight which means I will hopefully be able to go home now obviously that is kind of dependent on how long things take for the live load because obviously, as we've learned so far, my luck has not been the greatest, so now I am prepared for the worst. However, I'm remaining positive, thinking positive thoughts. I'm sure this one's gonna go super smooth, just like the one yesterday did, and everything's gonna work out exactly how I planned. So that's where we're at now. I also have decided, based on how long it has taken me to edit the previous videos and I still have not uploaded them yet at the time that I'm recording this because of the fact that I don't have Wi-Fi in the truck. I have decided that based on that fact, rather than, I, I know in a previous video I said I wouldn't say where I'm going to or, or where I'm going from and all that for the safety of the load, I realized that I'm taking so long to record anyways that by the time you guys will see it, I'll already be so far past that that there's really no point in me not saying at least like the city and stuff that, that I'm going from and going to, or, or the region, you know, like there's no worry of my safety or the cargo safety because again, by the time you guys see it, it'll already be in a totally different place and it'll be fine. Also, I guess I should note of why I didn't record the previous loads that have had those issues. 
and that's just because I was covering a lot of the same territory. I knew I was going to be driving at night, and also I didn't want to record too many videos without uploading the first one, you know, because I don't want the first few videos to come out and you guys give feedback on that on those videos, and then me still have like 10 more videos that have to come out, you know, without following that feedback that you gave me. So yeah, that, that's kind of my thought process there. And I don't know, I may still end up having a bunch of videos that come out before, or that I've already recorded before I start getting feedback, but whatever. It is what it is, I guess. <laughs> but I want to do at least negate it as much as I could. So that's where we're at now. We've got about an hour or so to get to Glendale from here. And I will catch up with you guys then. For now, enjoy some dash cam footage. We're definitely going to get here early. I am two and a half miles away. Uh, it is 8.45 and I am not supposed to load until 9.30. So I guess we'll show up, just see what they say. Maybe they'll take us early, but if not, hopefully they'll have somewhere for us to park and we'll just kind of hang out and wait for us to be loaded and go from there. Looks like some old abandoned businesses here maybe. Doesn't look like that's being used anymore. Definitely not. They've got all the entrances gated off and there's nothing there. All these buildings are falling apart. Huh, I wonder what this used to be. I mean, obviously, like, it looks like some sort of mill, but I wonder what company owned it. Looks like a pretty big facility, too. Yeah, they, they fenced all the way around. Every single entrance is fenced over. said something different than what the truck route says to do but I do not feel comfortable going on a way that's not a truck route I do not want to get a ticket and I am the captain of my ship so I'm going the way that the road signs tell me to go not the way that uh, my directions say to go so that sign that sign says plywood trucks stop here and I'm pretty sure that is me. I'm pretty sure I am a plywood truck. I think I'm getting loaded with plywood. That's what everything says. So, I guess I'm stopping here. The right spot indeed. So, now he said I just loop around here, follow the all scaled trucks exit here sign. And then he said there's a dock right around the corner here. And I am good to back into that and then slide my tandems once. I am lined up and that is the dock right there so that should be a extremely easy back and we love that Pretty sure I'm not gonna hit the curb there and I have got all the room in the world to get straightened out so I am using all of it <laughs> to slide my tandem now. I forgot to open the doors. So now I gotta pull back out, which is actually fine because I was off a little bit. But now I gotta pull back out. And then open the doors. And then I can back all the way back. All right, we've got our red light. 
we are being loaded. We have now got a green light. All the stuff is loaded towards the front, so I'm gonna pull forward and then slide my tandems all the way as far forward as they will go. And then we'll go scale. I also gotta grab my paperwork. And then I think we'll get on the road. And we took about 15 minutes to get loaded. So it's not even the, my appointment time yet and I'm already loaded and all good. So that's sweet. Like I said, positive vibes. So far they're working. <laughs> I unfortunately made a mistake and I had not been looking back at my footage and I had recorded a bunch of clips where I started talking before the GoPro actually started recording. So this is present time Drew trying to fill in all of the gaps and kind of catch you up on what I'm talking about, like what, what I started to say that the camera didn't catch. So in this case, I was talking about how at this facility, you have to pull all the way through the facility, out of the facility, back into the facility in order to get to the scales. That's what I'm talking about here. Out of the facility, which is like kind of complicated, and then drive back into the facility to scale, and then if I'm off weight or whatever, I need to adjust it, I had to leave again and then keep doing that loop. So this might take a while. Here we are pulling up to the scales. Scales look tight. Let's make sure we're all lined up straight here. Okay, and I've not used a scale like this before where it loads or weighs everything at the same time, but we're below 80,000, so that's good. And it says all passengers must stay in the truck while truck is on the scales. So I guess I drive forward and then go into that little booth and print out my ticket. I'm gonna assume, I hope, or else I have to pull all the way around again. <laughs> nobody there, but there was a bunch of notes in there. So I assume there's gonna be a note that's like, hey, do this. All right, well, let's, I guess let's go find out. Well, I'm gonna go find out. You guys are gonna stay here. Okay, so on this one, I was basically just looping back around to the scale, which as you can see from my caption, I was very dumb on not knowing how that scale worked, but this was just me looping around and just noticed some cool locomotives. I got some rail service here. Pretty crazy, cool looking stuff. Okay, in this one, I was talking about the fact that I called my driver manager to do what's called a live loaded call. I don't remember if I've mentioned that in previous videos or not. Basically, it's just where we check in with our driver manager. They make sure that we did everything right, you know, because they just want to make sure that we actually did all the stuff we're supposed to have the right load, all that kind of stuff. And I was talking about the fact that I did not put load locks on this. And that's one of the things they ask about on the live loaded call. So she had asked, my driver manager had asked if I put load locks on and I said, no, it's loaded low and that's what I talk about here. Because I was like, oh, it's loaded low, it doesn't matter, but it's not how low it's loaded, it's how far from the back of the trailer it's loaded. So now I have to go break the seal, put in a load lock, and then have them re-sign the paperwork and stuff. So that sucks and that's my fault, but oh well, it is what it is. Okay, at this point I started to get like frustrated with everything that was going on so I didn't do a very good job of recording so on this one I'm basically just like now filling you guys in kind of on what had happened so I had driven back around to like rescale and also break the seal and put the load lock in and put a new seal on and all that and that's kind of what I'm talking about in this clip I do not fully understand their scales but I was overweight and had to slide everything forward that was a nightmare and I still am not entirely 100% sure that I'm I'm good. I think I'm like 20 pounds overweight on my drives. But there's no scales for a while, but I don't I don't know because I can't read their scale. I don't understand. I've never used a scale like that before. Don't know how. Uh, there was nobody around to show me. So um, I'm going to drive to the next closest scale and scale up. I guess we'll go from there. But yeah, and then um, my company made me put load locks on it even though I don't think it needed them. I mean, it was, it's loaded super low. Even the 
the forklift driver was like, dude, none of your drivers ever put load locks on this stuff. But so I guess I should have just said yes, but I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm not that kind of person. I would never lie in any situation, even if it want, even when it does cause me this kind of nightmare. So um, yeah, I had to find somebody to tell them and then break the seal uh, and then put a load lock in, which the load lock barely fit. So the load lock, like the trailer's so wide that the load lock doesn't even really go all the way across. Um, it like, it like barely does. It's if that load were to shift, I don't know if the load lock would even actually do anything, but whatever. Put the load lock in, um, and then put a new seal on and had them sign it. And now I tried to call them again because we have to do what's called a live loaded call and they didn't pick up. So now I have to sit here and wait until they call me back and do the live loaded call. So I'm having a bad time. I've been here for like an extra hour and a half over what I was supposed to be here for. So yeah, not, not cool. Okay. This one's not exactly filling in because I started talking before I'd started recording. This one's filling in because I, I will admit that I let my frustration, I think, get the best of me. Uh, I don't think that these next few clips represent me the best way. And that said, though, I am not going to hide moments of, I don't know, weakness, I guess you could say, from you guys. I'm, again, not that kind of person. I want to get show you guys all the ups and downs. So, although I don't think that this represents me in a normal situation, uh, I, like I said, let my emotions get the best of me, and I still feel like you guys deserve to see those moments where I let my emotions get the best of me. So, sorry that these next few clips are a little rough, <laughs> but they are what they are. So, here we go. I'm having a terrible time. So, I tried to go to a scale that was about 27 miles from the shipper, and that scale was closed. So the next closest was 45 miles from the shipper. Just got here, scaled, and I am 260 pounds over on my drives. So I am probably gonna have to drive all the way back to the shipper, and I was hoping to spend the night at home tonight, and now I'm gonna run out of time on my clocks and not be able to do that. So that absolutely sucks, and I... <sighs> I'm so frustrated. I'm just so over this. <laughs> so over this. So in this next clip I actually am talking about the fact that I let the emotions get the best of me and also watching this back I don't think I've really at this point in the video had explained how frustrating like everything was like and I know like again looking back on it I, I should have just remained calm but like I had spent hours driving back and forth, like back onto the scale, trying to do math and understand it all while other drivers are also trying to scale behind me. And I couldn't figure out like how to get the scale ticket to print. And I, you know, again, had to break the seal and then put the load lock on and then put a new seal on and find somebody to sign it. And they were confused on why I was doing all that. And uh, I just sat waiting for hours for the phone call for the live loaded call and then found out that I didn't even have to do it a second time. And it just, there was a lot that I don't think I fully recorded because again, I was so frustrated that like that wasn't my main focus, but yeah, this next clip is me basically talking about the fact that I definitely let my emotions get the best of me. I told you guys I'd tell you all the best and all the worst. And unfortunately it's been nothing but the worst so far, <laughs> but uh, we're at back at the shipper. They're reworking it and then we're gonna go back, scale it again but I told them basically to just move more towards the tandems because then I at least, or more towards the rear of the trailer because then I at least have room to play with the tandems to be able to get the weight right because that was the problem is I was, on, I, I was only overweight on the drives because I didn't have any room to play with, you know? So they're moving all the weight towards the back. Well, not, they're not moving all the way towards the back. They're moving a pallet or two near, closer to the back so that hopefully it balances the weight out a little more. The problem is, what I'm, I think, most frustrated about still is the fact that I was hoping to go home tonight for my 10 hour break, and now I will not get to do that. So that is a bummer, it just sucks, but it is what it is. I've got home time coming soon, so just gotta wait for that. But today just has not gone well for me. None of this has gone well for me. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm over it, you know? Like I said in my first driving vlog, I said I was going to ride the high of enjoying it while I could, and I'm glad I did, because I am no longer enjoying it. 
And I know I'm only not enjoying it because things aren't going smooth. And I know eventually I'll get used to things not going smooth and it'll all be fine. Because I do love the driving. The driving makes all of this stuff worth it. But right now, this stuff is all so overwhelming and stressful and frustrating that I let it get to me. So I just gotta get to the point where it doesn't get to me anymore and then we'll be fine. We have rescaled, we're all good. Um, I don't have the scale numbers up right now, obviously, because I'm driving, but I believe it was now, it's now 33,580 on the tandems, so the trailer. Um, it was like 32,000 something on the drives, and then it's now 11,900 on the steers. So definitely a, a solid rework we're all set again before we were at 34,260 on the drives and only like 32,000 something on the uh, on the trailer tires so we're looking a lot better now uh, we've actually got room to get our uh, def stop get some uh, def and then also we have a fuel stop I think we'll have room for I don't know if we'll have room for a full tank but we'll have room for some fuel as well um, I'll just have to do some calculations to figure that out, figure out how much I can take. And yeah, we're looking a lot better now. So we're still, I'm, I'm, I, Al and I were talking about it. So Al, my wife, in case you didn't watch the previous vlogs, uh, she, we were on the phone for a minute. She had to go, but she's going to call me back again soon. And she is going to help me while I'm driving so that I'm not wasting time. Um, she is going to help me calculate what time I need to leave tomorrow morning from where I'm staying tonight in order to get to my delivery on time because it's gonna be sketchy because I have to take a 10 hour break. I, like, because the delivery time isn't until 11 a.m. tomorrow and I can't deliver it early. So I have to take an 11 hour break because I've only got four hours, four and a half hours left on my 14 hour clock for today. So I have to reset that. So we have to make sure that I have enough time to take a 10 hour break and still get there on time or else I'm gonna have to call you know, my company and have them tell the customer I'm gonna be a little late or whatever. So that's the first problem. Second problem, I now am gonna be running low on my 70, so I sent them a projected time available of, of how much time I'm gonna have left after I deliver tomorrow, and that now is completely thrown out of the window because I don't think I'm gonna have hardly any time left on my 70 after I deliver tomorrow. So that means that I am going to have to send a new PTA uh, that probably says that I'm not available to drive until the next day, which is also a problem because that is the last day that I work before my home time. So it's just, uh, there was a very big snowball effect of, of things that have now, that have happened because of me eating away essentially an extra, I don't know, I, I left at 9.30 and then the first time and didn't end up leaving the second time until 3.30. So yeah, it ate away like, whatever that would be six hours you know so big snowball effect of things that now I have to figure out or Al and I have to figure out I guess so I'm very thankful that Al is willing to help me figure it out so that way I don't have to be eating away at my clocks while figuring it out but it still is very stressful so we will see what happens I will update you guys once Al and I have talked on the phone and have gotten things figured out I'm I, my fingers are crossed that hopefully it's not as bad as I think. I'm like kind of running through it in my head with the numbers that I can remember. And I'm thinking we're gonna get there on time with like maybe like half an hour to spare. And I'm thinking we're gonna have like an hour or two left on our 70 tomorrow, which again, I won't be able to do anything with. But I, I, I mean, I won't be able to do anything with as far as like getting a new load or anything like that. But that would at least give me enough time to get to like a place to stay for, you know, until midnight where I get the next day's hours back. So I'm essentially running on recaps right now. And right now my recaps are not looking good because tomorrow or tonight at midnight, I only get three hours back. So that's why I'm running into this whole problem. And I obviously don't have time to take a 34 because by the time I got done with my 34, I would be eating into my home time. So it's a whole thing. That's why I'm running off of recaps and uh, and why we're having to do all this math and try and figure all these things out. So, fingers crossed, I'll keep you guys updated. This one, I was just talking about how pretty the sunset was, basically. Very pretty. The clouds look super cool, and I wanted you guys to see that, so I figured this is a, a solid time to give you the update. So, 
my wonderful wife helped me through all of the math equations that I could not do while driving. So um, we figured out how much depth and how much fuel I can take. We also figured out what time I need to leave from where and all that. Because again, I think the last time I updated you guys, I didn't know any of that stuff for sure yet. So we've decided I'm gonna drive to Brooks since that's where I have to get my depth and my fuel anyway. We're gonna drive to Brooks. I'm gonna get my depth and fuel tonight so that I don't have to worry about it in the morning and park the truck for the night. I am still going to get to go home. I had, the last time I updated you guys, I had said that I was not gonna do that anymore because I had already given up on that. Um, because I didn't think that Al would want to come get me super late and then have to drive me in the morning. But she made a good point that I'm going to be home in two days anyway. So she doesn't really need the car that bad. I mean, she's we, there's another car that she can drive. So I hadn't thought about that part of things. So I am now going to get picked up by Al at the time. She, she's going to meet me there, basically, so that that way we're making as good of use of time as we can and then I'm just going to drive the car back to Brooks in the morning. What that means, I'm going to get to Brooks probably about 7-ish, 7.15 maybe tonight. going to fuel up and all that kind of stuff, get depth. That's probably going to, I estimate that's probably going to take like 45 minutes just because I'm, I'm sure there's going to be a line at the fuel island at Pilot and then I have to do like a weird thing. So I fill up with depth in the yard, which means I have to go into the yard, loop through the yard, come back to the depth, get the depth, drive across the street to the fuel island, get fuel, and then loop, you know, I'm basically making like a figure eight, which is kind of funny. But uh, then I drive back into the yard, park, and all that kind of stuff. And then I think we estimated that I shut down at 8.30, as long as I'm, as long as I'm shut down by 8.30, we're gonna be good. So I'm gonna shut down, and then in the morning, I have to be back at the yard roughly at like 6.15 to be able to do my pre-trip and all that, and then I have to be on the road by 6.30 in order to make it to my consignee with like, hopefully like 30 minutes to spare. Um, again, I didn't want to push it too much and risk being late. I wanted to make sure that I get there. We, we tried to do the math in a way that made it so that I get there 30 minutes early. And then the other math that we had to do was in regards to my 70 and we're gonna be good on that. Once I deliver, I'm gonna have like two hours left on my 70. So I'm probably just gonna send a new PTA to the company to say like, I'm not gonna be available the rest of tomorrow and then just tell them I'll be available at midnight on the 15th. And then hopefully what they'll do, because my home time is, or sorry, not the 15th, the 16th. My home time is for the 17th. So hopefully what they'll do is just find me a load that goes from Kent or somewhere near there, Seattle or Tacoma or whatever, and just comes down to like the Portland or Salem area. Yeah, hopefully they'll just have me come back down with a load and, and I'll either drop it to be repowered in Salem or I will deliver it somewhere close to Salem and then just drive empty back to Salem. So hopefully that is what will happen, but I guess we'll see on that front as well. But either way, that's the update for now. Only other things that are probably gonna happen in this video is me getting my death and stuff. So rest of the video, probably not gonna be super exciting. I don't even know if the, the all the video before this was super exciting. I'm sure that I, like, I'll admit, me being frustrated and trying to record it is really tough because then I obviously look back on it later and I'm like, I hate watching it. I hate watching myself get frustrated and like, I hate the things that I say because I know that I, some of the things I don't necessarily like mean, you know? And so I have to watch that back and like, I promised you guys I would show you all of the best and the worst, and I want to do that. I want to be able to show you guys those moments. It's just hard when I go back and edit them because I'm like, man, I regret saying that, or I wish I wouldn't have said that, or whatever, you know? But again, that is the reality of 
being a rookie truck driver and making lots of mistakes and all this kind of stuff is that you do feel those emotions and I don't want to hide those emotions, especially from anybody that is interested in doing this. Like, again, I was the person that came into this super, super excited and I am still super excited to do this, but even being someone that is super excited to do this and is loving the good parts of it, it doesn't necessarily mean that the bad parts aren't still really bad. So. I wanted to share all that with you guys and hopefully this video wasn't a complete downer for everybody. And all of it did end up working out in the end. We're all good on our weights now. I'm still gonna get to go home tonight and all that. I'm, I should still be delivering on time. So it all worked out, but yeah, I just wanted to make a point about like kind of apologizing for that, but also explaining why I did still leave that in the video. And again, we're ending on a positive note and I feel like that's what matters most. Filled up with def and with fuel. We are all set to go for tomorrow, so tomorrow I just show up, do my pre-trip, we get on the road, and we make it to Kent on time. Uh, we're actually looking really good. I double-checked everything uh, just to make sure now that we're actually like stopped. I checked to make sure that we're we're all set, and yeah, we're, we're a tiny bit ahead of schedule. So I didn't plan to shut down tonight until like 8.30, and we shut down at like 7.50-ish, 7.50 like 55 so we're like 35 minutes ahead of schedule which is nice that means i can show up tomorrow morning at like six and then or six six fifteen ish do like a you know 15 20 minute pre-trip however long it takes and then get on the road so we should be on the road by 6 30 that gives us again like a half an hour buffer and i think that'll be useful considering i'm probably gonna hit traffic in the morning so i don't know i might even show up at six because that's about when my clocks are going to come back i might show up at six and then just go you know as soon as i'm as soon as i'm done with the pre-trip just again give myself as much of a buffer as i can just to be sure and then as far as the 70 hour clock goes because i mentioned that that might be cutting it a little close it looks like by the time we're done dropping everything at the yard i'm assuming you know or at the consignee uh i assume that that's probably going to take about an hour which means that I will have about three hours left on my 70 hour clock when I'm done. So not a lot of time. I don't, I don't think they'll give me a load tomorrow. I, you know, I just, cause of the fact that I've only got three hours left, I would assume may, maybe they'll have me pick something up that's not due until like the next night. Um, that's, you know, well within that time frame. but I don't know, I guess we'll have to see. So either way, everything's good for now. And I'm going to head home, get a much needed shower. I am disgusting. I'm gonna shower when I get home. <laughs> and then uh, eating a home cooked meal, cannot wait. And then going to bed. Okay, I did actually end up recording it as though these were like the next video that you guys are gonna see was part of this video. But I am editing now and I'm seeing that looking back on this, I treated it like the video was ending here. And also I'm already at like more than 35 minutes at this point. So I am going to end this video here. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you made it this far, thank you so, so much. Thank you all so much for the support on the videos so far. Uh, again, this is me from the future. So I'm seeing that, you know, vlog one and two and also even vlog zero, you guys absolutely loved. So thank you guys so much for the support. It really means a lot. If you are a new watcher and you made it this far, please do consider subscribing. Also, drop a like on the video and comment. It helps bring more in, people in, helps support the channel a lot. I always like to leave this stuff until the end instead of being that guy that talks about this stuff in the middle. But yeah, if you guys made it this far, thank you so, so much for the support. And hopefully, that means I'll see you guys in the next one. But for now, have a great day, and peace out. So